Hello everyone. I'm Dr. Shiv Kumar, head of the department, Civil Engineering. Uh, today we'll discuss about the classification of brick in building materials and construction. In my previous lecture, we have discussed about the manufacturing of bricks and uh, other process related to the brick manufacturing. So after that, what we get, that is the final product, which is known as a brick. So this brick is classified into this, these following four categories based on their quality properties. The first one is the first class brick, then second class brick, third class brick, followed by fourth class brick. So as far as the first class brick is concerned, these bricks are burnt in the clays. They are sharp edged, square, smooth and straight. Both the edges are parallel to each other. These bricks are used for the superior kind of brickwork only. So as far as the strength is concerned, the first class brick are having the strength comparatively more than second and third class brick. This is the image of a first class brick. The dimension of the first class brick should be 19 is to 9 is to 9 centimeter. It should be free from pebbles, limes and other kind of organic materials. It should be well burnt, should be red in color. It should not absorb the water more than 20% of its dry weight. <clears throat> the next is second class brick. These bricks are ground molded. They are also burnt in the clins. The surface of these bricks is somewhat rough and shape is also slightly irrelevant. These bricks may have hair cracks and their edges may not be very sharp or sharp as the first class brick. These bricks are commonly used at the place where brickwork is to be provided with a coat of plaster. The next is the third class brick. These bricks are ground molded. They are burnt in clamps. They have a regular surface, rough surface and distorted edges. <clears throat> so this, uh, these kind of bricks are not recommended to those places where rainfall is comparatively heavy. The second class brick is showing in this image and some properties are also there. So generally it's shape, size, texture and color is not regular and uniform. Only a uh, batch of the bricks having a different kind of color, texture and shape and rest next batch may have some different qualities or properties. It is slightly overburnt than first class brick. It should not absorb more than 22% of water. Some pebbles, some concurs may be present in this brick. And also they may have some <clears throat> salt issues or salt concentration in them. These are the third class brick as shown in the figure. These are underburnt soft and light colored and not uniform texture. They emit a dull sound when stuck together. They should not absorb 25, more than 25% of the water when immersed in 24 hours or overnight in the water. They, and these bricks may have some efflorescence problem issues when soaked in the water. So some whitish lines or layers may deposit or may appear on the surface of these bricks. And so these bricks are not recommended for the permanent kind of works. So temporary structure can be made Sometimes on the construction site, you can make the hut or residences for laborers. The next is the fourth class brick. These are the overburnt bricks. Most irregular in shape. They have darker in color. They are darker in color. Like sometimes blackish, sometimes grayish, sometimes metallic colors are there. These bricks are used as an aggregate for foundations, floors, and road, etc. Because of the fact that the overburnt bricks 
have a compact structure, hence they are sometimes found to be stronger than the first class brick. These are the bricks that are shown in the image are known as the Chama brick also. So these are overburned bricks, vitrified bricks. They are used only for the making aggregates of lime concrete. But also they can be recommended for the road construction as a pavement. Next is the classification of brick as per their constituent. There are various types of bricks used in masonry, like common burnt clay bricks, sand lime bricks, engineering bricks, concrete bricks, fly ash clay bricks. So let's discuss about them. The common burnt clay bricks. Common burnt clay bricks are formed by pressing in mold. These bricks are dried and fired in clay. Common burnt clay bricks are used in general work with no special attractive appearance. When these bricks are used in mold, they must require plastering over the surface. So aesthetically, these are not good when we make a ball from these kind of bricks. So it's not appearing in, appearance is not good as the first class brick. Next is the sand line bricks. Sand line bricks are made by mixing sand, fly ash and lime, followed by chemical process during wet mixing. The mix is then molded, then pressing, and the final product came out from the mold and allow it to dry. This can offer advantage over clay bricks, such as their color appearance is gray instead of regular reddish color. Their shape is uniform and presents a smoother finish and does not require plastering. These bricks offer excellent strength as a load bearing member. The next is engineering bricks. Engineering bricks are bricks manufactured at extremely high temperature forming a dense and strong brick, allowing the bricks to limit strength and water absorption. Engineering bricks offer excellent load bearing capacity, damp proof characteristics and chemical resisting property too. Concrete bricks. These concrete bricks are made from solid concrete. The concrete bricks are used, placed in facets, fences and provide an excellent aesthetic appearance. These bricks can be manufactured to provide different colors as pigment during this their production. Next, fly ash brick. The fly ash bricks are manufactured with clay and fly ash at about 1000 degrees centigrade. These bricks also can also be made like fly ash brick. I'm not talking about the fly ash clay brick. I'm talking about the fly ash brick. This can, these bricks can be made by mixing cement and fly ash together with a proper water cement ratio. That is also provide a very good strength and can be used in the construction work. Uh, they are using, uh, nowadays they are using as a uh, partition wall. <coughs> now the test on bricks. To know the quality of bricks, following seven tests can be performed. In these tests, some are performed in laboratory and rest are on the field. For an example, first one is the compressive strength test, water absorption test, efflorescence test, hardness, size, shape and color test, soundness test and structure test. So let's talk about the compressive strength test. This test is done to know the compressive strength of the brick after crushing them in the equipment. Generally, five specimens of bricks are taken to the laboratory for testing one by one. In this test, a brick specimen is put on crushing machine and force is applied or pressure is applied till it breaks. The ultimate pressure at which brick is crushed is taken into account and calculation is being made to calculate the compressive or crushing strength of the brick. The standard strength of the brick should be 3.5 Newton per millimeter square. This test is performed on the equipment which is known as CTM compression testing machine. The next is the water absorption test. The water absorption test is being done when 
a brick is immersed for 24 hours or overnight into the water and then take it back, remove extra water from the surface and put it into the oven or uh, oh, some sorry. So uh, this brick is taken into the account and weigh the brick and calculate the water absorption of the water. It should not be 20% of the total weight of the brick. Next is effluent test. The presence of alkalis in the bricks is harmful and they form gray or whitish layer on the brick surface by absorbing moisture or water. To find out the presence of alkalis in the bricks, this test is performed. The brick is immersed in the fresh water for 24 hours and then taken out from the water and allowed it to dry in shape. If the whitish layer is not visible on the surface, it proves that absence of alkalis in the brick. And if the whitish layer visible about 10% of the brick surface, then the presence of alkalis is in acceptable range. And if it is more than or equal to 50% of the surface, then it is moderate. And if the alkalis are presence is over the over or more than 50% of the brick surface, then it is severely affected by the alkalis and such kind of a bricks should not be recommended for the construction work. Next is hardness test. This is the simplest test. This can be made by nail scratch. If the impression, if it left any impression on the brick, then the quality of the brick is underrated. Next, size, shape and color. This is the test randomly collect 20 bricks are staked along lengthwise, widthwise and heightwise. And then those are measured to know the variation of sizes as per the IS standard. Bricks are closely viewed to check if its edge are sharp and straight and uniform in shape. A good quality brick should have bright and uniform color throughout. Next is soundness test. This, in this test, two bricks are held by both hand and stuck with one another. If the bricks gives clear metallic ringing sound, it means the bricks are of good quality. Next is the structure test. In this test, a brick is broken or a broken brick is collected and closely observed. If there are any flaws, cracks or holes present in the broken face, then it is not the good quality bricks. So it should be free from any kind of holes, cracks, etc. Now, next is the defection brick. The first defect in this in these bricks are overburning. When the bricks are being overburned, then a viscous vitrification occurs. However, if the bricks are overburned or molten mass is produced in the brick, they lose their shape, such as such bricks are not recommended for the construction work or masonry work. They can be used as a brick bat when making of floor or making a base for the construction of roofs. Next is under burning bricks. When bricks are not burnt to cause complete vitrification, the clay is not softened because of insufficient heat and the pores are not closed. This results in higher degree of water absorption and less compressive strength. Such bricks are not recommended for the construction work. Next is bloating. This defects are observed as spongy solid mass over the surface of burnt brick is caused due to the presence of excess carbonaceous matter and sulfur in the bricks. So a brick should be free from the any kind of carbonaceous and sulfur material. Next is black coal. When brick clay contains bituminous matter or carbon in higher quantity and they are not completely removed by oxidation, the brick results in black coal mainly because of improper burning. Next is cups. The deformation of shape of brick caused by the rainwater falling on hot bricks is known as cups. Next is effluence, as I have already discussed this defect during my previous PPT. So effluence is due to the presence of alkalis in the bricks. So when we put this brick 
into the water or some water may pour on this, these bricks. So these alkalis get dissolved and appear as a white surface over the surface of brick. So this is called or this shows the presence of alkalis in the brick or clay. Next is checks or cracks. These defects may be because of lumps of lime or excess of water. In case of the former, the when bricks come in contact with the water, they absorb water and react with the lime nodules causing expansion and consequent disintegration of bricks, whereas shrinkage and burning cracks result when excess of water is added during the brick manufacturing. Next is spots. Iron sulfide is present in the brick clay, resulting in the dark surface spot on the brick surface. Such bricks, though not harmful, are unstable, unsuitable for exposed masonry work because it has not appearance and good in appearance. Next is blister. Broken blisters are generally caused on the surface of sewer pile and train tiles due to air imprisoned during their molding. The next effect in this line is laminations. These are caused by the entrapped air in the voids of clay. The lamination produced with the lamina on the bricks face, which weather out on exposure. Such bricks are weak in the structure. So this is about the classification of brick based on material, based on their class, like first class, second class, and third class. We have discussed about the general kind of defects in this lecture. So we'll meet again with a new topic, which is tiles. Till then, thanks to all of you and for listening my lecture carefully. Hope you enjoy, enjoyed this lecture. Thank you.